Hello and welcome to What's Moving in the Forex Market, brought to you by myself, Kurt Capra, and Pristine Trading. Please keep in mind that all comments are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. Today we're going to be looking at six different currency pairs, all U.S. dollar currency pairs. In the top left, we have the Euro U.S. dollar. To the right of that, we have the Aussie U.S. dollar. And to the right of that, New Zealand U.S. dollar. In the bottom right, we have U.S. dollar Japanese yen. To the left of that, U.S. dollar Canadian dollar. And in the bottom left corner, we have the Great British Pound U.S. dollar. Starting back up in the top left with Euro US dollar, we can see that it's been just really going sideways here over eh, the last two, three weeks, basically over the last month or so. We've seen pretty much a sideways range on Euro US dollar, but this is within the context of an overall downtrend. If we look at the weekly chart, we can see beautiful downtrend has been in place for many many weeks and months now and right now we're just taking a rest at this point so uh, again overall the trend is down the daily chart is going sideways we have a lower high being put in here potentially right now on the daily chart and all indications point to uh, a retest of this prior low and then if we can get through that we continue to see prices dropping. If not, there's the potential for uh, stabilization and a move back up to retest this current high that we're sitting at right now and possibly even up to the 1.1007 area. And then we'll see what happens if we get above that level, we begin to retrace back up towards the 1.1392 area. So we'll see what happens. We've got our lines in the sand, and we just have to stay objective. Moving to the right, we have Aussie U.S. dollar, and here's another pair that has been largely sideways for an extended period of time. The only real play on this, in my opinion, would be playing the bottom of the range to the long side, the top of the range to the short side. There's been no real directional bias up or down as I said we're really just largely going sideways but if we take a look at the weekly time frame again we see that this too like euro US dollar is in a downtrend and so the overall bias is bearish but again based on the daily chart it's bearish but with a neutral tone right until we break the bottom of this support down here there's really no reason to be overly bearish or really committing to shorts. Uh, at this point, like I said, it's more of a neutral bias playing the top and the bottom of the range. In the upper right, New Zealand uh, US dollar. This one, again, also has been largely sideways, but, but a bit larger of a range, more of a, uh, a grind up and down. You can see here lately we've been slowly working our way higher, and uh, we'll see if we continue to work up into deeper uh, levels of resistance or if this is the extent of the, uh, the move into resistance, and now we start to head back down. Uh, so at this point, again, more of an overall neutral bias, uh, slightly more bullish just in the sense of the last several days have been bullish. You know, the moving averages are also pointed up as well. So in the very short term, there is a more bullish bias, but overall it is more neutral. I wouldn't be expecting any kind of great looking trend to develop from this. Um, you know, and we'd have to really look at the weekly time frame to see what kind of potential there is for trending. And unfortunately, there, there's work to be done here. You know, we have this double bottom in place that we've been working our way higher from. We've penetrated into resistance to the left here, but we're far from out of the woods if prices are going to be moving higher. So we got to keep this in mind. We have to be aware of these areas and just understand that any push up into this level is going to be met with resistance and that's really what we've been seeing 
on the daily chart. You know, this this very herky jerky type of action is a result of the resistance that we have to the left. So we'll see. You know, as I said, though, I don't foresee any kind of wonderful, great trending action coming out of New Zealand U.S. dollar in the coming week. U.S. dollar yen has been flipping back and forth. This has been pretty volatile uh, in, in terms of the sideways nature. A lot of overlapping candles and, and no real directional bias here either. It will be interesting in this coming week to see what kind of move off of the lows we get here. If we get a, a minimal bounce to, to no bounce, it would suggest price will be coming back down towards this 117.05 five area uh, but if if not you know maybe we can push back up towards this prior high from uh, a week and a half or so ago so again we've got our lines in the sand drawn we'll see where prices go but this is something that we'd be watching for is again what kind of move off of these lows do we see and if there is really no bounce no reaction here buyers aren't stepping up it suggests that we will be moving lower over the coming days and, and over the course of this coming week. U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar finally broke down from this sideways range that it had been in. So now that we've gotten the break lower, we do have room for prices to continue moving lower. So this next retracement or sideways pause should result in a opportunity to consider a short position time will tell we'll have to see but we also have to keep in mind the weekly time frame is in an uptrend overall so yes there are indications that we have found a a top here we've got this crack to the downside which is short-term bearish but overall we again have to realize and remember that the weekly time frame is up so we do we do have to keep that in mind and, and any downside targets based on the daily time frame have to be uh, put within the context of the weekly charts in other words we don't want to be so piggish to to look for a huge sell-off to the downside um, and while that may happen we have to be realistic in our expectations and realize that you know we're just going to follow the trend and stay objective so again with this break to the downside it does suggest that the US dollar Canadian dollar pair will continue to slide a bit more and then we'll have to see what happens at lower levels if buyers begin stepping up based on the retracement into support and the bullish nature of the weekly time frame finally pound US dollar this has been again uh, somewhat whippy I mean it's been weak overall you can see the the overall bearish bias here we did have this break below the prior pivot low and and started looking weak at this point as if it were going to continue but uh, subsequently had a very significant rally back up deep into resistance so this was a very bullish retracement overall uh, the nature or the depth uh, at which it was able to retrace is an indication that buyers were stepping up rather aggressively and we'll have to see what happens going forward in this coming week yes we should likely see prices coming in a bit but then at the 50 percent retracement area or so do we start to see demand creeping back in as this tries to form a higher low and possibly make another push to the upside or does that 50 percent retracement area fail and send this back to the prior low from beginning of april we'll have to see that's something we'll want to be watching but overall again the weekly here also is very bearish downtrend certainly in place and and in the past i mean we've seen bullish candles appear and have absolutely no follow through so is this going to be another scenario like that or do we get a little bit more follow through as i said i think one of the things that will be very telling will be that 50 percent retracement area do we get there and if so do buyers step up and drive us higher or does it fail and come back down right that that'll be the test so to speak so stay tuned we'll see what happens um Keep an eye out for the next video, but in the meantime, stay patient, stay disciplined, stay objective.